as the Christmas season commences, consumers may have to budget an additional 20% for the price of livestock due to alleged corrupt practices of some police officers at the various checkpoints across the country. Now, the Livestock Dealers Association has threatened to sue the Inspector General of Police if he fails to call his men to order. They are accusing policemen of demanding illegal fees at the over 70 checkpoints in Ghana. In cases where these livestock dealers refuse to pay or less, they are abused. My colleague Nancy M. Fadzradosi visited the central market at Old Fadama and reports. We are in the festive season and Christmas is fast approaching. I know that for lots of people, the you know, consumption of chicken has become something you are tired about and want to try something new. We are here today at Old Fadama, to be precise, we are the central market where livestock is sold for this Christmas and throughout the country. Uh, now, basically, we are here because we had some complaints from the Livestock Dealers Association that the prices of these animals and livestock you see around here is going to shoot up because the police are charging exorbitant prices from them at the various checkpoints across the country. It's very difficult that to pass through through the police barriers, the, the, check, the check checkpoints. It happened that uh, sometimes this this is the way that it's not supposed to be so but we are finding it difficult that police people they are collecting uh, our money instead of protecting us what they do is they will ask for the documents first when you give them the documents and then uh, they ask you to give 50 Ghana or 40 Ghana or 30 Ghana that is their demand if you refuse to pay the money what they will do is they'll go and sit down and leave you when you are going there, they ask you that if you are not get, bringing the money, don't near them. So you only have to pay the money or stand somewhere. And the animals inside the vehicle too, there is so many heat that the animals should not be standing more than 10 minutes. And we are knowing that the police people who let the animals be caused. Because when you are taking 50 Ghana each for each barrier, the, the barrier is more than 100 coming to Accra or Kumasa or Takradi. So you can see that the money or the police will let the animals cost. And we don't have choice to put that money that they are taking to the animal stop. I can tell you that last January, one of our colleagues who passed away through because of the, the ask for the money. And the money, it doesn't have the money they are asking. And you want to beg them that they should try to accept what they have. They say no. When you want to challenge them, they start beating him. They used to, to beat his head three times. When he get here, we're trying to sent him to Arsenal. Uh, he passed away through Kolbu. So to attest to the fact that policemen um, across the country from the seven, over 70 barriers across the country charging them for some amount of money for their products or their livestock to be transferred from up north to southern Ghana, there's a man who is called Tobile Sumaila who was attacked by a policeman after he failed to pay just five cities out of the 20 Ghana cities that was demanded by this policeman. Now, he narrates his ordeal to me. Yeah, 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 through Sa barrier. No one missing in tier 200. And I panic out. Say, oh, my man, your man, a man, a ten city was so woman so woman. I feel you did five city as a so so, nine fifteen thousand. And I demand was on you get a twenty gunner, say a twenty gunner, dear woman, woman, young cop. Your power, woman, chows are nothing. No, Miss Young Quiet Cano, Mamma, be on Ben Womu. And I miss me, 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 I don't know, I'm saying, I know John Tinum in Shada Nimsa Ayedano. And two free Kentampo Brickna, I will tear a you know, one drew Sab Brickno, I was Sab Kentampone, Sab Ayuno Finifi. So, what basically he's narrating is about the fact that he was coming down south to bring his livestock to this particular spot. Um, he met a couple of policemen who demanded for some 20 Ghana cities, but unfortunately for them, they didn't have enough money. So, they decided to offer him 10 Ghana cities, um, and then the policemen refused to take the money. They added five additional Ghana cities, and with that, um, they got furiated. And so, one person who was even sitting somewhere, 
just came out for out of the blues and just hit him on um, his left eye. And but how long? Ena adie we AC. How long? Ena AC. The bay na adie we AC. Yeah, in fact, it's two months. Two months. What about treatments? What about hospital? What are they? What they normally catch? What they normally catch about when you know? Me know. Been the call booking. You meet back Ghana, no. No, me chair me a drubi na me cut out drug store. When me see me the sasa, I back up. My yeah, 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 and yeah. Na me the call booking a coffee normal. Nti me do ana na ya me yaka si. Ana me the call doctor. Ana woman fe. Woman mama drug. Ana woman mama date. Say date no sa me samba. Me sa ko e woman sa mama drubi. Na you say that. And you know, me first and then me the papa said that and me who me who are the so it was at this exact point that chairman of the Livestock Dealers Association of Ghana, John Kutu, got very emotional as he threatened to take the IGP to court if they are unable to address the issue as a matter of urgency. Because they have to be protecting us and they are collecting our money. So I don't know whether the, uh, the, 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 the vice president didn't tell the IGP to warn his people what they are doing is not right or not. We decided that to let lawyers to write positions to IGP so that they will know that what their men doing is not right. And up to now, we are not been hearing anything. We will, st I will stand here as a leader of Lives of Dealers Association in Ghana that if it happened that this will continue, we personally will send the IGP to court. <laughs> Meanwhile, Director General in charge of uh, Public Affairs with the Ghana Police Service, David Aklu, ACP David Aklu, in an interview says they're willing to meet with the livestock dealers to find an amicable solution to the concern. Well, since we're talking corruption, I've been joined in the studio by Executive Director of Pen Plus Bite, uh, Kwame uh, Ahiyabenu. We'll hear from the police in the meantime, uh, though. But in the meantime, let's engage uh, Pen Plus Bite on what they make of the Yesterday, we had a comment. I mean, we saw what happened, the launch of the anti-corruption week. Uh, we heard from the uh, Swaj. We heard from senior minister. And it's been trending, actually, what they said. Uh, what's your general overview of what's happening in terms of corruption? Are we winning? Are we losing? Is the president helping? Okay, thanks very much uh, for this question. Uh, corruption for us have been with us for a long time. And unfortunately, it's not something that uh, we are going to eliminate completely tomorrow. However, we have to work towards it. Now, what we are aiming to do this time is that we want to focus on humanizing corruption. Because for a lot of people, when they say corruption, they cannot feel it. They cannot touch it. Mm. For example, if I mention to you that $10 million is in your pocket this afternoon, it's so unreal. But that's what corruption is. People are taking a lot of money. And it means for a lot of citizens, uh, what we call rape. Mm. Uh, there was this case that uh, Lebanese raped the house help. They went to the police, and the police brought the lady back. And what? Uh, asked her to pack her belonging, and she got uh, uh, a month's pay. This is the police literally raping this girl mm. again. And that's corruption, because an officer took money. Mm. Instead of protecting the girl, mm. they rather... Uh, send her away. So, so for, us, for, for corruption, we have to personalize it, humanize it. It means that if they are not a pregnant woman, go to the hospital, they may not be able to have the resources to deliver successfully because resources have been taken and pocketed by somebody. So what's the pen plus bytes definition of corruption, as you're saying, that you think that we should change the definition of corruption? What is it and really what will it change? What it will change is that people will now realize that Corruption impact them on day-to-day -day basis. Mm. For a long time, it's like an abstract concept. Mm. A lot of advocates are fighting some right. CSOs. Right. But we want to democratize the fight. So every Ghanaian, everybody can contribute to the fight. Mm. This week has been an important one, of course. Uh, the anti-corruption week. Yeah. What are we to expect? The key message you want to pass is that we need to fight corruption. It's not a journey that we can start today and tomorrow uh, it can end. In this direction, this week, which will end on Saturday, is going to be the World Anti-Corruption Day. 
We have a series of activities. We have a series of program that is aimed at highlighting the issue. As you mentioned uh, yesterday, it was formally launched. And every day of this week, we are going to have a lot of activities and programs. One of the things we did ahead of this uh, week was that we did a poll mm -hmm. where we had a lot of citizens. Uh, and the basic question is that do you think the current government is doing something about corruption? What was the outcome? And the outcome showed that 55 people said nothing. And about now 30 said that uh, not much has been done. So it means that out there, the government could be putting a lot of effort into the fight. But out there, a lot of people feel that they are not winning this war mm. against corruption. Mm. Mm. Is, is that something that we should be concerned about? Yeah, we should be concerned. It means that the message, either the message is not getting down, mm. or people are not realizing what has been done to fight against corruption. Mm. What is Ghana Says No, the, the Ghana Says No campaign? Tell us a bit more about it. So what that. we are trying to do is that we are, as I mentioned, the key message is I want to personalize it. Mm -hmm. So if I went to my grandmother in a village, he can actually define corruption for me in a manner that reflects its negative impact on her. Mm. So what we want to do is I want people to go to the website, which is Ghana Says No, and make a pledge. Is that a website? Ghana it's Says No, no dot dot org. Okay. Oh, dot no org. Dot org. So Ghana Says No dot org. org. Okay. They can make a pledge. Okay. And the pledge is that they are against corruption. Mm. On top of that, we are focusing on, you and I are old, we are focusing on the future generation. Okay. I mean, the eight-year-old, seven-year-old. I'm not year, too old, though. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about the, <laughs> okay. the seven-year-old, 12-year-old. Right. We're well, looking the at the generation of Yeah, club. because right. we need to now get the message to them. To them, so we, that they can grow up with uh, it. Yeah. Because it appears that some of, so, I mean, uh, maybe your generation, <laughs> which is <laughs> quite different from my generation, <laughs> they are so rooted. I mean, maybe it's rooted, so they can't really see yeah. the negativity yeah. and, that comes yeah. with corruption. And the statistics show that, Mm. people above maybe 20 in university mm. there's no uh, they become what? numb to it yes. i guess okay so, so you're so targeting we have to teenagers we have to and we Sounds are using great. social media mm. we're using videos to reach out to them okay. with the hope that when the message get translated to them they can be able to do something about it what are the big plans beyond anti-corruption week uh, finally? We, we have a big uh, 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 program on saturday mm. where we hope that the vice president is going to be there the un general secretary uh, speech on anti-corruption is going to be read okay. and we hope we we'll climax this whole week at TBT and I want to go home with the fact that people have heard about corruption they should be worried about it mm -hmm. they should be take an action about it and, and do something, something about do it. something about it. That it's, it's a pretty simple uh, message and I think that corruption the issue of corruption has been beaten over and over again but we still come back and deal with it it is still sitting with us as a society so it, it's very simple go to Ghana says no dot org Ghana says no.org and take a pledge or make a pledge there yourself. Now, what the Pen Plus Byte is seeking to do is to personalize corruption, make it so personal that you, you get angry and then you want to do something. So it sounds, it sounds absolutely fantastic. you have any final words? The final word is that every Ghanaian living everywhere, we have to contribute to the fight. In your small way, even awareness of the issue is very important. Ensure that we can mobilize, organize, and fight the corruption in our small way becomes very important. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Kwame Ahiabano is executive director of Pen Plus Bites and they are uh, they have launched or helped launch the uh, the anti-corruption week which is ending this Saturday but they're asking you to go to Ghana says no.org make a pledge let's all fight against corruption. We can hear now from ACP a clue who's uh, saying that the police is investigating the matter in terms of the accusation being admitted against uh, the accusations being made by uh, the Livestock Dealers Association that their men are, are extorting monies from them. We have taken that issue very seriously. It was discussed yesterday at the management board and I've been tasked to get in touch with them so that we can have a meeting, we can have a better understanding of the situation and see how this can be stopped. Uh, there are rules and regulations governing the transportation of livestock from one place to another. And I know that the Ministry of Agriculture and then the Veterinary Service also have a role to play. There are certain documents that they are supposed to carry. And, uh, and, and I don't see how the police can unduly delay them if they are carrying the right documents. Uh, so we need to understand exactly what the situation is, where exactly these issues come up. Mm. where they face challenges with the police so that we can streamline some of these things and correct them because it's not good for 
their business, it is also not good for our operation. All right. And we don't want to yeah. Yeah. Okay, ACP, but even if these uh, transporters aren't carrying the necessary uh, documents that they need to move livestock, does it uh, deserve or do they deserve uh, to be delayed or uh, do they deserve to get monies taken from them? No, of, of course. That is why I'm saying that we are concerned about it and we need to sit down with them and find out exactly what the situation is. Because our duty is to facilitate movements of goods and persons across the country and even to neighboring countries. So we should not be the cause for delay. We should, we should not be the cause for, uh, you, know, you know, destroying somebody's business or causing loss to somebody's business. So that's why we are concerned and we have uh, um, to get in touch with it. I hope that after this interview, I got his number yesterday from your know, news editor. I'm going to call him today, and then we can arrange a, uh, a meeting either this week or early next week, so that we can see how this issue can be resolved. All right, we are, not happy, we are not happy about this, mm. and we certainly do something about it. And they are, they are also accusing uh, the IGP of not paying attention to their petition. What would uh, your response to that be? I don't know whether they have sent or they had sent any earlier petition, but yesterday when I heard it, I briefed the IGP and he was much concerned and he actually called for this meeting and we we'll certainly have to meet them this week or early next. And so what's likely to happen to these police officers who have been accused not only of extortion but also abuse? Of course, these are, these are, these are we don't ask of corruption and we don't condone it. So when we meet and we get evidence, you can be sure that next year I to take it. A necessary action like uh, what they... Disciplinary action, of course. And if it's yes, disciplinary action, of, and if it's, if, if it's proof that they have exported, that's the crime. So, of, of course, certain uh, necessary criminal action. ACP a close speaking with my colleague Benis Abu Beidu there. Well, away from that and corruption, it's been a good year for a lot of my colleagues here at Joy News. In terms of awards, uh, here's the latest Justice Beidu. Uh, Justice Beidu just won the Thompson Reuters Food Sustainability Award at the 8th International Forum on Food and Nutrition in Milan. Justice uh, has been speaking to us since morning. Hopefully we'll be able to raise him back on the line to, you know, have a conversation with him about how it's going after he won that award. And congratulations Congratulations to uh, Justice, congratulations to Team Multimedia and of course to Ghana because this is obviously an international award. Yes, so watching The Pulse with me, Gifty Ando Api. I'm going to take a very quick break. When I return, we'll bring you my conversation with Deputy General Secretary of Opposition NDC, Koku Anyaduhu. <laughs>